Hi, and welcome all to the CAA show. My name is Jaggi Basi. In this show, we have conversations and analysis about the issues that most affect the country. Today, I thought it would be a good idea if we could look at the media strategy of the present government, or perhaps the lack of it. Now, before I go any further, please understand that every government formulates a media strategy to project a positive image of the country and to counter negativity, especially from the foreign press. All governments, including the Congress and the various coalition governments in the past have had a media strategy. So what makes a media strategy? A media strategy is made up of, of four components. First, it deploys skilled spokespeople who counter the so-called bad press and project the government in a favorable light on TV news channels, social media, and in the print. Then it has the Press Information Bureau to clear doubts and highlight the government's programs and achievements. Thirdly, it strengthens contacts with friendly journalists who have taken up its cause in various fora. And finally, it has sophisticated diplomats and press attaches in missions abroad who engage with the foreign press and counter negativity. So on all these parameters, the present government unfortunately has come up short. The government was missing in action just at a time when a robust communication strategy and outreach were most needed. Oh yes, I'm talking about the time of the second wave in India. During those trauma-filled weeks, there was complete radio silence from the government. As a result of that, motivated journalists with political and social agendas on their mind had a field day creating absolute terror and fear in the public mind. Others went a step further. They wrote opinion pieces and falsified reports of deaths, cremations, and burials, all exaggerated to insane levels to project India as a basket case, a country worse than Ethiopia. And sadly, there was no one from the government to counter these reports. It is not anyone's case that factual reporting on the ground should not be allowed. Not at all. It definitely should be. But for every false report, there should be two to counteract it. Our strategy should be to engage more and more with the national and the international press. Let them have their biases, but at least they will carry a rejoinder if you engage with them. In that capacity, Mr. Prakash Javrekar's ministry was completely at sea. The BJP party spokesperson also went missing in action. Lastly, keep in mind an important point. There are many in the present government who believe that Mr. Modi's personality has such a law that others really not pitch in to bolster India's image. Such worthies also believe that Mr. Modi has no need to engage with the microscopic English-speaking press and the English-speaking class. He is, after all, a man of the masses. But we have seen the English language media does matter. And today's conversation is actually triggered by an article I read in Asia Week. It was written by one Mr. Bhim Bhurtel. And to quote him, India was, is, and will be nowhere in the world. He went further to quote an old Hindi proverb to describe India. He described our country as dhobi ka kutta na ghar ka na ghat ka. And then there was Mr. Kunal Kamra, a stand-up comedian turned keeper of the India's conscience. In an opinion piece in New York Times, Mr. Kamra accused the Modi government of having blood on its hands during the second wave of the pandemic. To quote him some more, he said, he, that is Mr. Modi, runs India on a cocktail of bizarre lies and high octane hypocrisy. What are the government's rejoinders to these articles? Why does the Modi government not want to put forward its counterpoint? It bothers me. And that there is only one narrative that is being propagated around the world. 
just as it bothered me to see the images of patients gasping for breath, images of women in a disheveled state lying in beds with their saris up to their knees, images of crematoriums. Which other country has allowed this abject invasion of privacy of its citizens? Let me clarify that I'm not talking of a crackdown on people who drag the image of the country and that of the prime minister in the mud. I am all for complete freedom of press. I am talking about legitimate responses from the government of India when the country's image is being sullied and lies are being peddled. Such thinking has landed India in the terrible mess we find ourselves today. Negativity about India has spread far and wide. The likes of Kambara and Bhi Burtel must be countered, but with skill, persuasion, outreach, but certainly not with intimidation. And it can be done. Look at the way the Foreign Minister, Mr. Jay Shankar, perhaps in tandem with Mr. Radar Punawala, within a day persuaded more than nine EU countries to reverse their decision and give green passports to Indians who have been vaccinated with COVID shield to travel as and when the travel ban is lifted. The moral of the story is simple. That is that everyone has to pitch in to take up India's case. And most certainly, the officer Mr. Jawrekar and his ministry, which has been found lacking in this effort. So, goodbye for now and keep watching this space and subscribe to our channel. And uh, cheers and have a good night, everyone.